Hello everyone, it's week six and we are working on a short story essay this week. It's a theme essay. It's your first major assignment. The assignments are due a little differently this week. Your thesis statement is going to be needed, needed to be posted in a discussion section that's due on Wednesday. That'll give me a few days to take a look at it and give you feedback before the weekend happens. And then the essay, the final essay, is due on Sunday. Now this is a theme essay and you got some options in terms of what, what story you want to write about. Now I want to go through the things you're going to need for the essay, where your focus should be, and then even how to set up a thesis statement for this assignment. So first of all, what do you need? We got these things. You need to choose one story and it can be any story that we've read this semester in this class. I would choose a story that you understood well, that was interesting to you, and maybe even a story that you felt good about your discussion writing um, about. So you can go back to those discussion assignments and actually use some of that information on setting or on character, on point of view, or on symbols, certainly on theme. You can go back and maybe harvest some of those ideas that you've already used. You're gonna so anyways, you're gonna need one story. You got to think about what the author's trying to express in the theme idea. And the theme idea is a big idea about life, family, uh, community, sacrifice, greediness, uh, loneliness, isolation. Any idea you, about life you see being presented in the story is a theme idea. A story is going to have multiple theme ideas. So if you read through some of the discussions this week and you see somebody writing about the same story you are, and they have a different theme idea, that's okay. I think great stories, and we've read a lot of great stories, they're going to have multiple themes. And then maybe even varying ideas about those themes. You're going to analyze how the details support your theme idea, and you're going to pick details that support your theme idea. Those details can be from setting, from character, from plot, from symbols. They can be from character names, they can be um, from point of view choices, they could be the title, really anything that's interesting to you that supports what you think the story is about. Finally, and this is the hardest thing, I think this is the, the trickiest thing about writing about theme. Certainly we can say a story like The Things They Carried has a theme of war. It's a story about war. But when we're doing a theme argument, which is what this paper is, you have to determine what the story is trying to say about that big idea. So what is the things they carry trying to say about war? What is it trying to say about soldiers and their experience in war? Uh, if I were going to create that essay, I would certainly be looking at who the dynamic character was, how the setting is described, what some of the interesting items are, what those items come to mean, what are some of the interesting actions in that story? What those actions come to mean? And then even with a story like uh, the things they carried, how it's written is certainly a part of the theme idea as well. Finally, you don't have to do this. This is optional. But I found an interesting way to end these papers is to take another story we've read that has a similar theme and just compare its presentation of it. Whether you want to look at a particular literary element you know, um, the things they carry is about war and it uses symbols, whereas um, The Interlopers by Saki is a story about war, but it uses more setting. That might be an interesting way to end the paper. I just think when you get to that conclusion, a lot of people summarize, and summary is okay, but if you really want to go for it, you really want to make a stretch, make a leap, uh, try making comparison to another story that we've read that has a similar theme idea. Now for thesis statements, this is the engine of your paper. It's a sentence that, a sentence or two sentences, usually at the end of the first paragraph, that identifies what story you're writing about, what the theme idea is, and then even maybe the elements, literary elements that the author uses to create that theme. Um, in its essential form, a thesis is a topic and an idea. And for this paper, the topic is the story, and the idea is your theme idea, your theme analysis. Um, let's go through a few different examples of thesis statements. 
This one is labeled the very specific grade of bad. <laughs> we have everyday use is a story about family. Okay, we got a topic, everyday use. We got an idea. It's a story about family. But we're missing a few things here, big ones. Who's the author? The story isn't underlined, italicized, or quoted. I always put quotes around short stories, so I would probably put quotes around this. And it's really not specific enough. What is the story trying to say about family? Family is a big word. What does the author mean by family? And, in, and finally, which literary elements does the author use to express this theme idea? Now, this one is better. It's not great, but it's better. Everyday Use by Alice Walker is a story that discusses the theme of how family, excuse me, the theme of family and how powerful a force a person's family can be in their life. All right, so this is getting somewhere. We got a, we got a topic of the story. We got an idea, the theme idea. We got the author's name. We got the title and quotes. And we even have a little more specificity here in that we don't just hear from the writer that the story is about family. We hear this more specific idea that it's that family can be a powerful force in a person's life. Hmm, all right, you got me thinking here. This is pretty good. Now this one is rated the best. In the story Everyday Use by Alice Walker. Excuse me, I'll read it again. The story Everyday Use by Alice Walker examines the powerful force that family plays in a person's life. The story uses family heirlooms as symbols of this powerful force. It is how the characters deal with these, fa these family heirlooms that helps to reveal the story's theme. Alright, so here we got a topic and an idea, the story and the theme idea. It's specific. We're going to be talking about how family influences these characters, how family influences people's lives. And finally, we got a preview of what the supporting paragraphs are going to deal with. They're going to be dealing with these family heirlooms, and they're going to be dealing with how the characters deal with these family heirlooms. So we're talking about symbols, and we're talking items, and we're talking about plot, action. And so this is a great thesis statement. It achieves everything you need to do in a thesis statement, plus it goes the extra step of previewing the supporting paragraphs. And that's what I always suggest for this paper in that thesis statement. It doesn't have to be very specific, but maybe clue the reader into what you're going to be using for support. If you're going to be talking about setting, maybe discuss a little bit about setting. If you're going to be talking about symbols, or characters, maybe you uh, preview that. I would say for this paper, uh, which is a four to five page paper, you're going to want to use a couple different literary items. So I would choose one or two, maybe even three of things, again, like setting, character, plot, point of view, the title, character names, symbols, symbolic actions, symbolic items. Um, I would choose a couple of those to use as my support. Finally, for this paper, besides having a spectacular thesis statement, you're going to need to use quotes. I always think this is really potent evidence of theme when you can pull a sentence or pull a line of dialogue from the story and put it in your paper. For each quote, you're going to need two things. For the citations, we're doing MLA citations. They're pretty simple. You're going to need just the author's last name and the page number. And you do not need to use any abbreviation for the page number. So here we have an example. Robert decides to help. Sorry about that. Robert decides to help the husband by constantly encouraging him to continue. He states, quote, don't stop now, draw, period, quote, Carver, 368, period. Don't forget that period here at the end of the final parenthesis, and if there's a period in the quote you're using, you should add that in as well. Once you've created a quote or used a quote, you don't want to just leave it there. You want to make sure you discuss it so the reader knows what we're supposed to take away from it. And <clears throat> there's some easy phrases to use when you're discussing quotes that you put into a paper. Here we see that Robert's a very encouraging friend. Um, the statement shows, clearly then, we can conclude from this that, this tells us that, and finally from this we can understand that. Use these little phrases to get us from the quote to your idea about the quote. All right, I think that's what we got for the essay assignment.
Again, the thesis statement is due on Wednesday this week. The essay is due on Sunday. I'm looking forward to reading these. These are always a treat for me. Choose a story that you found fascinating, that you connected to, that you feel comfortable with, that you understood, and start brainstorming evidence. I think putting a little work into the pre-writing phase of this paper before you just launch in and write it is going to help in terms of developing ideas. All the best this week. Uh, I'm looking forward to your thesis statements. Reach out with any questions or concerns by email. Take care.